Hi YouTube artists, I'm Kelly Hernig and welcome to the studio. Today I'm going to work with this palette. This is the Ganzai Tambi Kuretake Art Nouveau set. And I have a sketchbook that I'm totally dedicating to this palette because I want to start playing with colors and seeing how they work with each other, what kind of other color combinations I can create. And I just really want to have fun. This is such a beautiful palette that I am looking forward to just playing with it. I'm going to be using two brushes, I think. This is Royal Langnickel. They call it an oval wash and it's the half inch. I'm also going to be using my Da Vinci Casino in the number two quill brush. I'm not sure which one I'm gonna use, What if I need the bigger wash brush or this brush. So I've got both of them out. And then I've got a palette out. This is one of my favorite palettes by Bowerbird. And I just really like their palettes. I have this one and my one with the seashell that I both highly recommend. I wanted to show you what I've been doing inside of my sketchbook. I've been working on it. And this is one that I made. This is just a concertina sketchbook made out of a game board. So the game board is the back and the front here. And then I just folded paper to the size that I wanted and I created a concertina book. This is a paper from Holland's that is more like a mixed media paper, but it was what I had, so I'm using it. And this is how I have the palette arranged according to how I would use colors, which is my browns, my pinks, my kind of purplish greens, blues, etc. And so I've got it according to the order that I have it here. This one I have on YouTube I shared with you when I first started the sketchbook. So I will link this below in the description as well as all of my supplies. Uh, when I saw this and I was looking to go to the next page, a concertina unfolds so you can see it's page after page after page. I wanted to make sure that the design was going and keeping you pulling forward. So you'll see here that I started with the giant square and then I went to circles. I kind of like the circles because this is a Japanese watercolor and it's Art Nouveau. I think that it needed a kind of consistent design element. So I chose circles. So this first leaf I did the circles here, but then I put this circle. To go to the next page, see this circle? And then I went to this one. This is my little salt and pepper shaker. I've done this in the November favorites. I made her have blonde hair, but here she's got dark hair. And you'll see the circles kind of keep you bouncing from page to page. Then I go into the leaves here. Notice the circles kind of arching. This took you into this circle, or the void of a circle, I should say. And I led the design, I had the design kind of go down and then up and over. So I know that I wanted something really big here because you can see that this is very tall and delicate. So I needed something heavier here, something weighty. And I want you to look at the design here. So it's weighty, it's light, it's got some weight, it's light. So I need something weighty again or heavier. And here's what I decided to put there. I have a old clump of leaves. So I like this. I like that it's heavy here. I tried putting it all different ways, but I like the heaviness in this corner. So I have it drawn like this. I just laid it down and traced it. Throughout this sketchbook, I'm using four colors that I don't think will match. My tendency is to use like lighter colors, like these four that I know would go together or these that will go together. What I'm trying to do is pick one maybe from every other row that don't really go together. So this one is going to be flax beige, coral pink, pea green, and cobalt turquoise light. I know, <laughs> we'll see how this goes. This color seems so bright, so I will do everything in my power to mute it down, I guarantee that. So I will be playing with all four colors to see what happens inside these leaves. 
for my leaves, I want to make sure that I'm showing you the splashing technique. I had a couple questions on how I splash. So when I go to do that, I will bring you up close so that you can see that. I'm going to start out, I like the coloration of this. It's kind of more brown and pink. So I think this leaf here, I'm going to use the flax beige and the pink and maybe touch a bit of the green into it. I wanna make sure that they kind of have their own flavor of leaves, but yet because I'm using all four colors everywhere, I think that they'll look like they're toned together. But I wanna do this leaf first because I want the continuation of the color to kind of bring you in first. Instead of starting with like the bright blue, which would not match and not kind of lend your eye in, I wanna welcome you first and then get bright down here. Let's see, I'm gonna try using my oval wash here. I know I recommended this oval wash as one of my favorites and the reason is because of the point. Look at that point. So I can get into all the sharp corners and it's a really fat brush. Do you see how packed it is here? So it holds a tremendous amount of water. So let me start with the flax here, the flax beige. These are the creamiest paints. If you do not have these, they are like whipped cream that's really been whipped really nicely. It's just, it's so soft. <laughs> I just really love that. So I'm gonna start with the brown here. I wanna add some different values, so I'm just coming right into it. You can see I'm flattening the brush and letting some of the water just go everywhere. I'm gonna rinse and I wanna go into that pink. I'm gonna come onto my palette first and mix a little bit of that. Oh yeah, that's a nice color next to that. See how it picks it up? to the pink itself. I'm trying to get my initial washes down before I start splashing. I want a little more flax in here. There we go. I'm gonna pick up the water now. And when I dip my fingers, I dip to the first knuckle. So just from here to there. So I'm dipping those three fingers in because the pinky's too little. <laughs> so I just dip those three in. And when I go to flick it, I kind of go like this and flick my fingers. So I'm dipping in. And I am mostly flicking this, but the other fingers go with it. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. Try it on your hand and you'll see that they kind of all work together. While it's wet, I do want to add some deeper color. So I'm going into my flax. Going into my pink. I'm going to touch a little bit of the pea green, a little bit, mix it with the pink because I know I want pea green on this one. So let's introduce a little next to it here. When you are splashing, you don't want your paper real wet. Do you see how wet this is? See how shiny? So what I'm going to do is let it kind of dry for a little bit and then I will splash it again. If you splash when it's this wet, it really just makes the paper wetter. It doesn't really splash and hold its form. Okay, this one I want to introduce the pea green. And I'm gonna add some flax first, I think. I'm gonna pick up the pea just by itself
I don't care if these two run into each other. I think that will look kind of nice, especially since they're overlapping anyways. I want that a little brighter here. That's pretty. Rinsing and getting into my flax again. I'm watching, this color has a lot of pink, so this one I wanna do flax under it so that it's a little darker. I'm also keeping my eye on it to make sure it's not drying too fast. Okay, it's time to splash. Again, reaching in my water and then just flinging it down. I want to get some flax and pink together over here. So I'm going back to my original mix for my first leaf. I don't know what's going to happen with that flax and that green. We'll see. It'll probably be a really ugly color that I love. <laughs> this is the fun part of not using what you normally would use. You know, like I would normally pick the lighter colors do them all together. This kind of forces my hand into trying something different. And that's the whole reason that I dedicated the sketchbook to this too, because I do want to be different. These colors are really amazing. There we go. I want it a little brighter up there. Are these colors I would ever put together? Uh, probably not. <laughs> this is this green is pretty bright for my palette, but I am liking what it's doing. So I'm gonna add some flax here and here. And I need to get some water on this pretty quick. I like the darkness there. I'm gonna to touch a little bit more here and down here. Splashing. When I am splashing, I usually do it several times. The initial one, I let it dry a little bit, do it again, I let it dry again, do it again. If you don't like to splash, you can add salt as another alternative to this. I just really like the texture. And I'm loving that bright green right there and that really pretty. This little leaf up here, I want to just play with the, the pink and green and let's see what happens here. Can I touch a little more pink? This is the coral pink. You can see it's a lot brighter, so let me dab some in some areas here. What's nice is they're at different stages of wetnesses, so some will blend really well, some will be a little stingier to blend. Okay, I'm going to go into that pea green now. Let's get that nice and bright. Wow, that's intense. <laughs> What I like about a palette like this with this many colors is it offers a lot of different color combinations. I really like that, how that's just the two different colors. Splash. 
This leaf here, I want to introduce that cobalt turquoise light. So let's see, I have these two are kind of kissing here and I've got a little bit of a kiss here. So I want this one to kind of look like they're melding together. So that was the pea green and the flax. So I just bring them into one another. Let's make it a little bolder here. I go into the pea green. I touch a little heavier flax here. There we go. And I'm going to go into the cobalt. The cobalt is this color here. Ah. <laughs> gingerly, gingerly. That's not too bad. Okay, I'm going to touch some pink in this one. This is the one leaf that will have all four. It's kind of nice. Let's add some of that pink up there. Flashing. I kind of like the touch of blue there. So this leaf now, I'm going to let the blue be here at the bottom, but also at the tip because I want a nice colorful lead in to the next page. So I'm going to start with the, let's see, pink up here. I'm just kind of letting what leaf is there determine. Got a little pink there and I've got a little pink down here. So let's do this. It's gonna splash it in the middle here. Going into the cobalt. Now that I've played with it, see, it took away my fear. <laughs> I'm like, it's just a color, right? Do you want it down here to connect these two? And I want it to lead to the next page. Okay, let's get some pea green in there. It's kind of interesting how they're blending there. That looks kind of nice. Okay, I'm gonna splash. I forgot a whole little area here. <laughs> Let's add 
add some more of that blue. Maybe a little of the pink and blue together. Okay, I want you to see what I did here. So the brown welcomed you in to the soft brown and pink. From there, I kind of went off into pink and green, a little bit of brown, and then I introduced the pink and green here to the blue. This introduced all four are here, but notice that the blue is more on this page. So this cuts off here. All I have on this page is that little touch of blue here but you can see that it's pulling your eye this way through the paper. Now I have to find a color for the stem. I want to see what the cobalt will do with the flax. And I might have to mix all of them just to get a nice muddy color for that. That's kind of a nice dark color. So that was the flax and the cobalt. Add a little bit more cobalt. Ooh, look at that color. That's kind of pretty. When I'm doing something like this, because it has all these different colors, I am gonna pick up some other colors. So now I've just got some of the coral pink on my brush. And I'm gonna drip some in there. It's just a way to connect some more colors. And I'm going to drop some water in there as well. I'm going to pick up some of that pea green. I'm going to go back to that muddy color I made. I'm going to touch just a little bit of the straight cobalt. I like the idea of having that brightness in there. I'm going to let this dry and then I'll be back to show you the details. Just a reminder that I used flax beige, coral pink, pea green, and cobalt turquoise light for this. It's an unnatural pairing for me, but I am so pleased with the results. You can see the water just made them merge and dance together, and I really, really like that. I like that, you know, we came into here with more, more beige and pink, and then the green kind of exploded everywhere, leading to the blue here. Now, because I have the circles kind of going everywhere, right, to keep that continuity in my book, I am waiting to see what I want to add here, because I have this that kind of goes over this way, so I can put a circle here, which would make it kind of go up that way. See how that would do it? It would just kind of pull me up. Or I can pull it down this way. You see, because it looks now, you're looking for the circle because it's an element that is consistent throughout the book. So I have to decide what I'm gonna add here. And I know it's gonna be a smaller element like this because remember, I'm going small, big, small, big. But I just don't know if it's going to be uh, tuck it in under here or let it actually escape onto this page as well. Because if I tuck it here, it can be something small. And then I could add a little dot here. Then I can add another one here to kind of pull your eye through the design this way. It all just depends what I am inspired to do next. Now let me bring you up so you can see the texture that I was able to achieve on this. See how the colors mingled? And because I kept dabbing in at different stages of wetness, they're lovely. I love that darkness right there and that bright green. Look how they played. Look at those four. 
That's the only leaf with all four colors. I really like how the beige and green and blue kind of played together. That looks really nice. This, these two up here, let's see if I can get them both in. There we go. They're just really soft. The blue reminds me of clouds. Look at the definition of that because of the water. And I love these really dark edges here with the pink and the green so separate. And this one down here, I like how it's bright green here and then it kind of merges. I hope this has inspired you to pull out a sketchbook and just start playing. Leaves are everywhere. It's a great thing to start. It's a great thing to use and you can find them almost every day of the year. If you were inspired by today's content, please like, comment, or subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching.